Hello and welcome to this top-down engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from Mount Mountains and today we're going to talk about input in the top-down engine. So input is at the heart of every game and of course the, the top-down engine supports all sorts of input. So by default you'll find support for keyboard and mouse, that's how I'm playing right now, but also gamepad uh, set up by default for an Xbox PC pad. Uh, it also supports mobile touch thanks to the addition of nice touch inside the package and uh, You can of course rebind input uh, As you want so let's see how it's done. You would go into uh, Your project settings tab so that's right here, but let's say you don't have that tab open you go to edit project settings and it's gonna open on another screen your project settings tab that you can you know plug anywhere and if uh, you go to the input tab you'll see this long long list of axes and these are all the axes uh, that the engine requires to work by default if you go to the documentation uh, on the input page you'll see that it explains everything the uh, current demo binding uh, that you can change for keyboard and for gamepad. And how do you change uh, an input? So let's say you want to change the, the key that, uh, or the button that that makes you jump. Uh, you would find the player one jump, if, if you want to change it for player one, of course. And uh, here you have a positive button and alt positive button. So uh, let's say I want to change that to M, I just type M. And let's say I want to change that to uh, the button 2, I change that to button 2. I could set, set uh, a bunch of other settings, uh, gravity, dead zone, sensitivity. Uh, you can also you know, change access. All that, all this panel is really uh, regular Unity. So if you want to learn more about it, they have um, a documentation page for it. So I encourage you to check it out. Um, to use these input axes and um, the automatic support of mobile, gamepad and so on, uh, you will need to have in your scene an input manager. And by default, in most of the demo scenes, this will be for convenience placed on the UI camera. The reason for that is that this is the prefab uh, or game object really that contains all the mobile buttons so uh, it made sense to bind them together so if you click on your ui camera you'll find the ui manager but you'll find also an input manager and you will need one input manager for each of your players so if your game is only single player then only have one if you your game is like uh, four local players then you will need four of these and on each of these, you will need a player ID. And this player ID has to match the ones uh, on your characters. So for example, in my Koala 2D demo scene, if I go back to my uh, level, maybe like that, and if I drag into the scene my Koala right here, uh, if I go into its character script, Right here, you can see that my player ID is player one. If I wanted um, my Koala to be controlled by player two, I would just change that to player two, of course. And then I would need an input manager for it. Um, another thing that is good to know is that the level manager that instantiates uh, your player in the scene by default will take care of reassigning your player ID. And um, another thing uh, you can do with this that is really cool is used to, to tweak stuff. So uh, let's say you have your, your Koala character working, but you would like to see how a change affects it. So if you uh, put one in the scene, set it to player one, press play, the level manager is gonna instantiate a new Koala, all right? Uh, but the other one, as it has the player one binding, will also re respond to input exactly in uh, the same time. So, well, 
uh, going through. Of course, a teleporter is not such a good idea, but uh, you can you can do cool stuff like that. So right now I have these two koalas moving, and let's say I want to see how uh, it would behave if it was running slightly faster. So I change the run speed on one of these, and now I see the difference, you know, and I can compare and I can be like, okay, this feels better or this doesn't feel better. And I, I get an exact comparison point. So it's really useful. And I do that a lot when tweaking a character. As we've seen before in the UI camera that is over there, we have arrows, we have buttons, uh, we have a joystick buttons over there, bunch of stuff. And um, the engine takes care of that for us. So if we go into our input manager here, you will see a checkbox called automobile detection. And what this does is it's gonna detect your build target. So let's say you're building for iOS. Uh, the engine knows that iOS will only support touch control. Uh, if you're building for Android, same thing, and it will turn itself into the mobile mode. Um, so if I go just to build settings over like that, and if I were to switch to Android right now, it would turn uh, on play because I have auto mobile detection, it would turn these mobile controls on. I can also decide to force a mode. Um, so whatever the build platform I'm on, I can say right now I'm on PC, I'm going to click on mobile. And if I press play, you will see that uh, the mobile buttons appear and I can now jump using my A button here and I can control using the mouse, you know, and I, I, could, I could build and I could play with touch, of course. Um, that's, that's really useful. You can also decide on a weapon forced mode. So uh, let's say usually you would control the weapon using the mouse uh, in, in, in this default setting. Um, but let's say I, I turn it on to main movement now. And if I grab, if I grab my weapon, you see that it's now aiming towards my main movement direction. So it's also a cool way to uh, quickly, without having to change all the settings on all your weapons, uh, it's a cool way to test if it works on mobile or with a different control scheme. Same thing, you, you've seen I was um, controlling the character with a joystick, but I could easily switch to arrows simply using this. Ah, turned off, turned off mobile. Uh, like that. And now we have arrows. So it, it's really as simple as that. Uh, you can also fine tune some, you know, smooth movement, whether or not input should be lerped uh, and sort of the dead zone for your input. So that's also something you may or may not want to tweak. All the mobile controls in the top-down engine are handled by Nice Touch. So Nice Touch is uh, a solution of mine that is included in the Korg engine and also available as a standalone asset on the asset store. Do not buy it if you own the top-down engine. It's you, you've already got it all. It's provided as a gift. So um, yeah, if if you want to know more about Nice Touch and how mobile controls work uh, in the top-down engine, I uh, encourage you to go to um, the Nice Touch, nice touch documentation, and uh, it will explain in great details how everything works. So that should answer all your questions. Uh, I hope you learned something new today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.